Seattle as a city is an epicenter for trail running. I've always sort of drawn inspiration from the wilderness and somebody asked me what a trail run I had done looked like. That was when I was kind of like, what does that look like? After finishing Western States in 2016, I'm less focused on running my own 100. And since I didn't have a 100 miler to train for, I set about putting on my own 100. And this September will be a brand new 100 mile race that I've created from scratch that's like my baby. I've, I've always had a, a weird obsession with unwords, so words that begin with un. Every book I read, I circle every unword in the book. And I think a trail like this, a, a setting like this, is actually, like Grand Ridge is pretty unassuming. You know, you have Tiger Mountain nearby, which is a pretty big attraction. It's a little bit unknown, even though it's right next to Tiger Mountain, which you can connect to from this trail here. My parents used to live out here for about 10 years, and so whenever I would come and visit them, it's just literally out their back door, I would toss on my shoes and go for a run for three to 20 miles in here. You get a little bit of quietude, but I think to me, the sort of unness of running or the unness of writing in art is that you're sort of establishing where the boundaries are in attempt to then get beyond those boundaries. So where can my physical body take me at the moment? And then how can I get past there? So I'm Director of Outreach at The Seventh Wave, which is an arts and literary organization that's based in Brooklyn, New York. And we publish art in the space of social issues. So the idea is to kind of slow down the way that we have conversation and sort of examine the contradiction that exists inside ourselves and also between different people. The intersection between art and running for me is the fact that a lot of boundaries that we think are physical boundaries are actually mental boundaries and vice versa. So it's sort of unveiling um, how far you really can go and how far you want to go. Sometimes, especially when it comes to art making or writing, you know, I think about what are the conditions that I need to create in order to create. If there's ever a time uh, where I feel like I'm getting to a stopping point in writing, that's typically when I need to start moving. For me, running fuels writing and writing also fuels running, so it's kind of that collaboration between being in nature and then experiencing that once again in reflection. I've always sort of drawn inspiration from the wilderness, from the woods, from big nature. And then at some point, uh, somebody asked me what a trail run I had done looked like. And that was when I was kind of like, what does that look like? The first map I did was of the rim to rim to rim in the Grand Canyon. So we did the uh, South Kaibab to Bright Angel Trail. For about two and a half years in New York, I worked a night shift. So from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. And it was around 11 o'clock one slow night where I had a blank sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11, and just started to draw the route that we did. And just kind of let the ink flow. Just let the hand kind of move across the paper. Didn't really stop and none of it looked like the actual Grand Canyon, but it was more so just kind of an illustration of what it felt like to run for 13, 14 hours inside the Grand Canyon, over 22,000 feet. You know, once we made it down to the bottom of the South Rim, you know, there was no way out. <laughs> so it's a similar thing, I think, for the drawing, which is you can't really erase. You know, you start somewhere, you know where you're gonna finish, and kind of in between is the experience that you're going for. Seattle as a city is, it's an epicenter for trail running. The possibilities are really in every direction. You have Orcas Island, Bainbridge, Vashon, and then if you just want to come out this way toward the mountains, you have Grand Ridge Park, Mount Sai, or Tiger Mountain. We're just five minutes outside of Issaquah right now, but I think the, probably the best part of running in Seattle is that wherever you decide to go, it's going to be scenic. From Capitol Hill, where Fleet Feet Seattle is, if you want to see water, you just go down Pine Street all the way down to Pike Place Market. I always approached running as a pretty solitary 
experience much more over the past couple years working at Fleet Feet, just getting to know more of that community of runners as well. It kind of really makes the element of running come really to life for me. In 2006, I went to Western States as a, a rookie there. I'd run two other hundreds. Um, I had the fortune to, uh, to run with Scott Jurek as my pacer, which was pretty incredible. He'd won it seven years prior to that. I nearly won the race and collapsed at the finish. And then because I was helped up by Scott and another pacer at the time and helped across the finish line, I was, I say disqualified. The race folks say um, it's a DNF at Roby Point literally 300 meters from the finish and certainly didn't get the win, didn't get a finish, nothing in 06. That was pretty heartbreaking. I'd finally gotten to a place, at least mostly, where I wasn't so concerned with racing because even up through 09 at Western States, I was still training and, you know, I was definitely running to be at the top. In 2015, Enough time had passed, I'd aged enough, and so it was really just about finishing. Definitely going back 10 years later with two kids, it felt amazing to, to finish it. I, I finally feel like I have closure on it. I, there's really something magical to me, that something I love about the 100 mile distance. Well, after finishing Western States in 2016, I'm less focused on running my own 100. Since I didn't have a, a 100 miler to train for, I said about putting on my own 100. So that's kind of where my focus is now. And this September um, will be a, a brand new 100 mile race that I've created from scratch that's like my baby. Yeah, so all of that, I mean, the, the race logistics, the planning of it, the creation of the course, it's been super fun. Anyways, I've been carrying this saw with me because we're just coming out of winter. So there's uh, lots of blowdown. So I'm just doing it on my own. Uh, not like with a chainsaw or anything, just my little hand saw. The race is the Tianaway Country 100. And it's gonna be hard. It's got uh, 28,000 feet of cumulative gain, but I think it's gonna be really as beautiful as any, as any race that's, that's out there, honestly. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. I tell all of our training program participants, like in our, everything from 5K up to marathon, I always tell them my goal at the end of whatever program it is, is to get them out on trails. Like that's always where I'm trying to steer people. We met up this morning at uh, Fleet Feet Seattle, up on Capitol Hill at seven. We carpooled from there as we do for all of our hillbillies runs. We try to do one, once a month destination trail runs. You know, we have some really great trails, even in Seattle and uh, in the Issaquah Alps. But particularly in the summertime when things start to melt out higher up in the mountains, we try and get out and get people to places like this in the Tianaway. So we're, um, we're gonna do the Iron Bear Loop today. One, it's really beautiful out here, but I'm also putting on a 100 mile race in September. And the section we're gonna run today is the Lollipop. So it's an out and back course with a 12 mile loop on the end of it. There's probably like 3,500-ish feet of climbing, maybe not even 3,200 feet of climbing. But we'll get up to a really pretty ridge line and some real exposed, we'll come out of the forest that we're in now and get up into some real views. It's beautiful. Having the store has, has just been incredible. I've been here working at the store for 14 years. It's definitely like the hip neighborhood. We joke a lot at the store that we ought to flip flop our hours instead of being like 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. We ought to open at 8 p.m. and stay open until 3 a.m. I love kind of being situated between the Puget Sound and the Olympics across the way and people are real, people just seem to do sort of everything. I've been to enough other places, I feel like this will always be my home.